Welcome students to the online NPTEL course Contemporary Architecture and Design. So in the previous class we started discussing about internationalist movement and we have uh, seen few examples of uh, Ludwig Mies uh, van der Rohe and uh, Philip Johnson's house and then we will uh, continue with us uh, with some other examples of uh, architects like Le Corbusier who was also um, uh, who started working uh, who, who has a great contribution in the internationalist movement and later also he have um, um, examples in brutalist movements and other movements as well. Uh, so uh, in the um, timeline if we uh, start placing internationalist uh, movement so it's uh, in the transition of uh, phase 1 and phase 2 as we are discussing in the earlier classes and the concepts of internationalist style was carried forward in the monolithic uh, which is in the phase uh, 2 which uh, sometimes it, we do not even connote to the term monolithic. So, it is a continuation of the internationalist movement and then in the phase 3 there was internationalist approach was also there with some iterations in the um, especially in the tensile where form and functions are together and brutalism and metabolism. So, a lot of internationalist um, uh, styles were also translated into these um, two expressions as well. So, that is why we were earlier we were also discussing that uh, internationalist uh, style from this time onwards there is a holistic uh, uh, there is a single uh, uh, thought which is uh, like design should not be contextual and it is like uh, a particular visual uh, style which is minimal and uh, less uh, which is uh, less, uh, less is more which uh, is uh, uh, connoted by uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe should uh, follow and that is uh, that is what uh, the high modern or the late modern or uh, style was uh, talking about that is how the modernism was uh, in one word mo modernism is um, connoted because before this there was a lot of different styles and it actually started with two opposite styles and even in the phase one there was a lot of different styles which it does not um, uh, follow each other's uh, um, uh, philosophy. So, that is why in the from internationalism onwards so there is a, a holistic one single thought which is um, which has uh, the perception of the high modern or the late modern uh, styles. Now, here also we have looked that uh, this is the internationalist style and which actually has some influence of, uh, from uh, Bauhaus and also the machine movements, machine aesthetics and which carried forward in the uh, later phases of architectural styles. Now, we have seen that uh, it was started in the uh, less is more is the term and started around 1930s and uh, uh, with a few um, of its uh, examples which we will see with the other uh, a few of the characteristics which we will see today uh, with the other examples where the prefabrication mach machine aesthetics uh, mat uh, modern materials and te techniques uh, which is uh, predominantly steel and glass modularity rectilinear form or the pure geometry and uh, black and white and gray these are the colors and the pure of uh, rity of the texture which is there and the visually lightweight cantilever uh, steel dead structures which we have seen in Francois house um, as well and interlocking free flowing spaces and juxtaposition of um, uh, plates uh, which is acting as a free uh, space or the uh, over overhang of the roof is there. Now, again uh, if we talk about uh, internationalism one of the pioneering architect uh, is Le Corbusier. So, Le Corbusier have given a concept of internationalism uh, uh, in, the, in the building in architecture. So, there has to be characteristics of internationalism uh, five different elements of internationalism which will give all these um, um, uh, which will evoke the sense of internationalism which is uh, like lightweight. Uh, which is floating and uh, then uh, the pure colors and some uh, the forms and all these uh, the uh, style of internationalism he uh, depicted with this five elements. So, he uh, called it five point of a uh, new architecture is the new uh, internationalism um, uh, of internationalism. So, these five points are pilotis uh, which is uh, which is the term for the columns free ground and free facade, ribbon window and terrace garden. We, we will discuss what these means. Now, pilotis is elevating the mass of the ground through a uh, on a column. So, uh, the ground floor will be something like this and this top floor will be elevated on the pilotis uh, or the column. Now, this pilotis can also be uh, on top of the building like we have seen in Francois house. So, this is uh, we are seeing these columns in the Francois house which uh, uh, which is supporting the overhang of the Fansworth house and it is floating on the ground 
and there is another plate in, uh, in front of the Francois house. Uh, so these, these are um, um, uh, again the pilotis which is visible from outside which shows the structure how the structures is f uh, flowing um, uh, from the support and also it gives the anti-gravity effect. So this is also there in the free ground. So when uh, this pilotis are added, so that frees the ground and uh, so the, this ground floor will be freed and the ground floor will be mostly for greenery and um, uh, for car parking and um, will give a floating effect. For here also, uh, it's 1.6 meter, uh, which is floating in the uh, uh, this this um, uh, platform is floating from uh, the ground. So that this ground is also uh, green and it does not hamper the ground. And uh, in Francois House and um, in in the in the uh, other examples, we'll see the Villa Savoy and other examples by Le Corbusier himself. Uh, so he is doing the uh, the same thing and uh, freeing the ground. And it also gives an anti gravity effect when you free the ground and the uh, this. Is is a structural uh, the visually heavy surface and when uh, when the ground is free it looks very lightweight in the structure so and the free facade so uh, uh, here what uh, the uh, the meaning of the free facade is uh, the separation of load bearing columns from the walls which is uh, subdividing the spaces. So the wall and the load, be uh, load bearing structures or the columns, uh, load bearing columns will be separate. So here uh, in the previous examples uh, also we have seen uh, it is there. Uh, so the if we look at in the plan of uh, uh, the Barcelona pavilion, Barcelona pavilion's uh, structural uh, uh, columns and then uh, are there and then few um, uh, elements as wall which is not even uh, encompassing the spaces are there which is not touching. If you look at the Barcelona pavilions uh, plan which is uh, uh, there in the previous lecture you will see that even in the uh, from the elevation it will also be there. From Francois house which is designed by Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, Barcelona pavilion is also designed by him. You will see the structural members from uh, outside and a glass curtain wall which is inside. So there is a little gap between that which does not uh, fall uh, together and also in the next example we will see from the plan. So plan in plan um, uh, in the Villa Savoy we will see uh, the, um, uh, the partition brick wall is here but the structural columns are uh, there is a distance between these two so uh, and also uh, in uh, through the structural column it can freely flow in a different um, angle uh, different different direction as well so this does not has to follow so this if this is the column the, uh, these are the column it should not uh, touch the column it might not touch the column the brick wall and it can uh, freely flow if the uh, uh, through um, and uh, free flow from any any spaces. So it does not um, uh, coincide with e each other and that is what the free facade uh, concept is there. So we will see some uh, with the other examples as well. We have seen it uh, before uh, in, in, in the uh, previous example uh, of uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe and uh, here on in the Corbusier's work also it is uh, it's there. Then ribbon window because uh, we were freeing this um, facade. Uh, so there is a possibility of making a ribbon window. So if these are the structural columns in plan, I am drawing the plan and then this is the uh, wall. So instead of putting a, a through and through brick work, uh, we can put a through um, glass work which is visible from inside or outside, uh, uh, visible from both the sides and there can be a full glass curtain wall and that is how in the Francois ha um, uh, house as well. So there was a through and through glass you know, uh, work which is inside the column, it can also be outside. If it is outside, so if this is inside and this is outside the building. So if the uh, uh, glass is outside, you will see a ribbon window and the through and through glass from uh, outside, you will not see the column. And in Francois house, what is happening, this eye sections or the columns are uh, here and this is outside and this is inside and the glass is through and through glass is here. And um, uh, from outside, you see this uh, columns which is coming uh, up in front of um, the building. And if in, uh, so these are the examples of free facade which is not touching uh, um, uh, the, this um, a partition wall which can be brick, which can be glass is not touching the, um, the structural grid. This is the structural grid, this is the columns grid and if in, uh, instead of these, 
uh, cases it uh, structural grid or the columns follow the same line of brickwork. If we put the brickwork over here, this brickwork or the window is getting punctuated. So, if there is a window, it will be punctuated by a column. Again, the window will be punctuated by a column. So, in elevation, you will see uh, these kind of windows in elevation. But in case of these, so you will see a through and through glass uh, window, totally it can be glass or in this cases, uh, so you will see a glass box, a total glass box which is behind the column and from outside you will see few columns. But visually you will see a total uh, through and through glass uh, uh, block and here in this cases, um, you can make also a ribbon like window which we will see in uh, his example of um, Villa Savoy. So, these kind of windows which is um, through and through uh, but, uh, because the columns are going behind the windows and you are not seeing it. So, these are the concept of ribbon window. Uh, in terrace garden, uh, what is uh, um, Le Corbusier is say, uh, saying, what you are taking from this uh, ground um, uh, so, you put that on the garden. So, the greenery is on the on the uh, top of the roof is a also should be a features of international style, but this general uh, this is followed by Le Corbusier, but not um, extensively followed by other architects, uh, but most of these other examples are in other forms are there in other architects work as well. But terrace garden his, uh, was his own interpret, uh, uh, interpretation with the five point of architecture because what you are taking from the ground uh, from the nature you should put it on the roof in different levels. So, uh, with the example of uh, Villa Savoy, so this is a, a building designed by um, Le Corbusier himself uh, um, which is uh, called Villa Savoy which is a very famous building. This is the ground floor plan of the Villa Savoy which you can see that the ground floor is elevated um, on uh, the column. So, these are the dots uh, which is uh, uh, represented as uh, columns. Uh, so, if you are from uh, not architecture background, so uh, it might be a little difficult, so I am explaining it. So, these dots, uh, so plan is what you are seeing from the top and then uh, uh, cutting it in this um, level, um, uh, especially uh, it is a little below from the eye level, um, eye le human eye level and um, seeing it from the top. So, here if you see these, these uh, dots represent the column and this is the uh, wall. So, uh, if you look at carefully the wall is actually, so if you look at these are the structural members. So, wall is not touching the structural members, it could have touched here, but it is there is a gap so that the column will be visible from outside and also this is not following these straight lines. So, this is freely flowing, so, this is the free facade and uh, the ground floor plan is actually uh, derived from the car parkings, uh, cars turning radius. So, this is the garage and three uh, uh, space for three car parks are there. So, uh, the turning radius of the car is actually giving the this uh, shape and if you look at this shape, this is also a part of the semicircle or the cylinder and which is also very geometric and in plan it is a square. So, and uh, so uh, in, in elevation you see because of this height you see a cuboid and uh, in plan which is a perfect square in the in the in this in the design. Now, if we uh, look at uh, this, uh, uh, all these five uh, principles or five uh, points of architecture are followed in here. So, pilotis is there. So, if you look at this, this is the pilotis and which is giving the anti gravity look because this is uh, visually a heavy mass which is getting supported by a, a slender columns or the pilotis and which gives uh, again uh, this uh, structure looks very uh, lightweight. And uh, then, free facade uh, just now we have discussed uh, from here, you will also see uh, a free facade which is like structural uh, grids you can see this is uh, behind this um, elevation line and um, so, uh, so, so the out, uh, outside uh, uh, wall or the outdoor uh, or the outside wall is actually coming out of this um, uh, structural grid. Here you can see it clearly. So, this is the structural grid and this uh, outside wall which is non-structural just uh, wall is coming out and this is the there is a gap between this. So, from outside you will see there is a free uh, facade in the top floor as well. So, here also this is the top floors uh, uh, and this uh, uh, first floors plan. This is the structural grid which is going and this wall is in front of this uh, grid which is not following the grid. Again in this you will see there is there is a gap between these two and because of this gap uh, he, he can achieve a uh, uh, through and through ribbon window 
So, if you look at this window, there is no punctuation or no gap in this window because the columns are coming and uh, passing behind this window and you cannot see this and you see a, a ribbon of glass and which is not uh, penetrated and not punctuated by any other elements. So, that also gives a, a sense of minimalism because uh, when whenever there is a there is a one material you will see from outside there is one color you will see and there is no break. So, lesser the uh, visual elements are there, lesser visual elements are there. And terrace garden will have some uh, um, uh, look in within that and uh, these, are, these are the parts where the terrace gardens are there. So, from top if you look at, so these are the gardens and uh, terraces which is there and small um, gardens are uh, um, added on top of this. Um, uh, terrace uh, and also if what um, this this part what you are seeing is added on top of this um, roof which is like a free flowing uh, uh, um, uh, vi a visual wall which does not uh, encompasses any room uh, but this is just a wall which uh, gives a volume on top of this um, building to balance uh, it visually because you are seeing a mass which is kind of a central uh, part and then you if you add a little part which balance uh, um, as a counterpart of this void and this is only uh, added as a freestanding wall with a punctuation within this uh, within this part. Now, uh, the Villa Savoy is uh, in uh, Posse, uh, uh, France and the ground floor is uh, designed based on the turning radius of a car uh, which um, uh, we were discussing and the modularity of the pure color was there again it is uh, white and from outside you see this uh, ribbon window and again play of solid and void is there and uh, from uh, outside you see this uh, structural grids and um, which is also visible from uh, outside. Now, if we compare the uh, uh, Bauhaus which was before internationalist movement and internationalism uh, together. Uh, so, we see a lot of uh, similarities because uh, there has a similar vi uh, visual vocabulary and internationalism is closer to the Bauhaus rather than the other movements of phase 1. Now, uh, in Bauhaus we have seen a pure uh, box like uh, structure and here also internationalism is also talking about the same box um, uh, or rectilinearity and the uh, material in the Bauhaus is at uh, uh, Fagus Boot factory by, uh, by um, Adolf Mayer and uh, uh, and uh, this is the um, Bauhaus uh, building. So, here also you see this uh, glass curtain wall and uh, from outside you see the structural members and that becomes the machine aesthetics uh, becomes the visual language and here um, uh, with the three colors the grey, uh, white and black, uh, black is also used in Bauhaus uh, buildings uh, interior and uh, this uh, steel members are um, painted black is also uh, what we see in the internationalism uh, this uh, white. Uh, black uh, colors are there, glass curtain wall is there and uh, uh, also the materials own color uh, and texture is exposed and uh, was shown as an aesthetic element. Now, if we look at the concept of free plans which is there in um, all the uh, examples of internationalist movement which is uh, uh, there in the Johnson house and also there in the Le Corbusier's um, uh, Villa Savoy and also there in the Francois the house or um, Amy's van der Rohe's um, Barcelona pavilion comes actually from few examples of Bauhaus and uh, or the stigil movement. This is the uh, building uh, we have discussed earlier Schroeder house by Jared Ridwelt in which falls under the stigil movement. Uh, we have discussed in the Bauhaus and the stigil movements. Um, Things you might have identified this Ridwell chair, which we were discussing, uh, by uh, designed by Jerry Ridwell, which is there in the uh, Schroeder house. So, if you look at the Schroeder house plan, so this is the first floor plan of Schroeder house, and Schroeder house uh, talks about the uh, uh, visual palette of uh, breaking the uh, composition in different grids of straight line and putting one colors uh, palette and uh, uh, putting uh, primary colors like red, blue, and yellow. You, you will see blue, red, and yellow and uh, with uh, black and white in the in the interior as well so which looks like a mondrian's painting and other uh, painters painting of um, uh, this digital movement so in the Stroder house what jared will uh, have done so if you see this is this plan is also a free plan and within that this composition is not uh, uh, so there's a composition of uh, one single um, 
uh, canvas. Now inside this if you look at so this is divided into uh, different lines. So these are the lines um, and here different colors are added. Now here if you look carefully this is the partition wall in after uh, putting the partition this, these are the partition walls. So, the partition walls breaks the spaces whenever it is required. So, this is uh, without the uh, plan without the partition wall when you do not draw this partitions, but if you draw this partition wall this becomes a particular space this red um, floor plan, uh, patch. So, if you uh, um, um, Ta uh, take this uh, panels out and this divides this space. So, this space is uh, it can also be free when you fold this partition walls in inside this uh, wall and then you can also take uh, take the partition wall out and then divide the spaces. So, this actually comes a precursor of a free flowing plan which uh, was um, there in the. Uh, so, here also you can see this is a partition wall you can um, take it out. So, it, it can it can be a uh, room for you uh, for for the for the use. So this kind of um, thing is uh, explored here in the uh, Johnson house. Instead of this kind of partition wall, they have used curtains to uh, um, divide the spaces or the free wall, which is kind of a curtain, a free flowing wall, which is not passing through the uh, building or. Um, uh, through through the structural members, uh, which is like a curtain, is uh, dividing the space and which is meandering around um, around the columns, which is uh, which um, also a kind of a connection between this Bauhaus of the digital movement um, from internationalism uh, internationalist style. Now internationalism uh, is uh, also very, um, uh, there in the. Uh, industrial design and industrial designs many of the uh, uh, new era of modern industrial design came from the internationalist movement. The industrial design, uh, design imbibed this uh, style and then later on there was different other styles which uh, uh, came from this industrial uh, uh, internationalist industrial design um, was carried forward in the modernist uh, next phases. And also those were some uh, parallel movements which is there in the architecture as well. So, again in uh, uh, like architecture minimalist um, internationalist approach is there in the industrial design as well and steel and other materials as a functional and aesthetic material is also there in the, uh, uh, in, in the uh, product and furniture design fit for the contemporary living of the studio apartment. Now, these studio apartments are the concepts which emerge from the free floor and the uh, meandering spaces which blended with uh, each other which we have seen in the architecture. So, industrial design, the interior and the furniture complements the architecture which is there in the industrial design. Because uh, what architects, uh, where the architects live, industrial designers take, uh, uh, take from there and start the uh, designing the interior and the furniture. So, the concept of uh, which uh, evolved from the architecture and uh, also uh, is there in the industrial design or the furniture design. So, they have the same kind of uh, it is revolved around the studio apartment on the free flowing spaces of the living um, style. The living style and the paradigm was changing from Bauhaus, the Jerry Treadwell's uh, Schroeder house we are seeing the change and then in the Francois house it is uh, extreme uh, where uh, if, uh, living spaces and all the spaces does not have any boundary. Well, so, the uh, inter, uh, inter, uh, interior design or the industrial design uh, was designed because of this contemporary studio apartment uh, style and which acknowledge the special constraints. And also we see the modularity which is there in the structural grid which we were seeing in the architecture this modular uh, proper rhythm is there. And then um, it is also it is uh, talking about the uh, uh, purity of the texture and the purity of the color which we will also see in the industrial um, uh, design. In the modularity we see the fit for any spaces which is internationalism. So, the furniture will be designed in such a way. Uh, that it this furniture should be fit for any kind of spaces, any kind of volumes and any um, uh, uh, any style of room because uh, they are eliminating all the ornamentation from the furniture. When you uh, create a cube uh, uh, without any ornamentation you can place this cube or uh, box 
in any places because it does not talk about a particular style of the previous era. When you start making the ornamentations or uh, uh, so, some decorations, then it talks about a particular style and put different kind of colors, then this uh, should match with a particular, if this is this kind of ornamentation or some other ornamentations is there in the queue, then these ornamentations should also be there in the other context, otherwise uh, in, in the room or the floor somewhere, then it will blend with each other. But when you eliminate the uh, ornamentation, then this cube is fit for any context, because they, it does not talk about a particular style. Instead of this ornamentation, if you put a Saracenic or a Moorish ornamentation, then it should go with a Moorish uh, style of um, a design or you uh, put an Egyptian um, uh, decoration, it should uh, uh, go with an Egyptian style of building. So, if you do not put any ornamentation that will go with any style of uh, uh, architectural style. Now, again uh, same thing with the color, if you put a uh, blue color here, then that will go with the blue tone of the building or the blue tone of the interior design, uh, the blue uh, uh, a particular color palette. But if you show the uh, real uh, texture or the true texture of the material, then it will blend with any kind of spaces or if you uh, put um, the grey tone which is black, white and uh, uh, or, or uh, grey, uh, then uh, it will go with any colour because black has uh, does not have any colour and white has all the colours together and grey has equal amount of all the colours. That is why these uh, grey tones, the achromatic colour does uh, can go with uh, any colour palette. So, that is why this, these colours, uh, the pure colours and uh, uh, the pure textures and the achromatic colors are used. Now, against the obsession of ornamentation of the design as uh, we were uh, uh, discussing, because this is an internationalism, uh, internationalism in furniture design, so all the elements, all the ornamentations were uh, eliminated from this design. Now, uh, in the internationalism style, one of the pioneering industrial designer was uh, George Nelson, who is the founder of Amer American modernism and uh, you must have seen uh, f a few of his uh, designs already because he is the first uh, person in the in the, who have conceptualized the cu uh, cubicles of office spaces. Now, what happened and actually it started from the Chicago movement, uh, so we have seen the office spaces has the free spaces. Also, uh, uh, in, in the internationalism uh, style talks about uh, the free floor plan, that is uh, we have discussed uh, uh, free floors in uh, the residential spaces, but in the office spaces also it is there. Till now the office spaces, whenever a particular company uh, purchases the office spaces, uh, they purchase a free floor, there was no, there would not be any partition walls. Now, whenever the employees go goes within the office, they need the cubicles. So, you, all of you have uh, must have seen the cubicles. The first cubicle of an office space was designed by George Nelson. So, he gave the concept of the cubicle and all the necessary elements for an office worker uh, to work within that cubicle was given. So, this cubicle is actually not a furniture, it is a very small room and all the furniture will be within that uh, space. So, uh, it is designing, uh, it is um, uh, kind of uh, extrapolating the design of a particular furniture. So, it is assembly of furniture which, uh, which is creating a workable space within the big uh, chunk of uh, free space. So, each and every employee will have this particular unit. So, this also talking about the modularity of the design. So, each of every unit will be the same thing and each will have its own uh, working um, self uh, inter uh, um, independent working space. So, one chair and few uh, working desks and um, file storage, storage with work uh, tables and chair and other um, uh, visual partitions, so that it cannot be uh, hampered with the others. And so, it is kind of a room which uh, um, uh, are there for one each and every employee. Now, is, uh, each of these uh, spaces, if you look, uh, can be uh, modular because you can uh, freely add another element another cubicle over here, you can add another cubicle on the other side. So, it is modular in nature, one module is there and then it changes. Now, there is another concept of meta design, we will uh, discuss this uh, uh, after few slides. So, whenever you design a modular furniture based on the need uh, of each and every person, based on the working uh, style and based on the uh, type of work each and every uh, person is doing, uh, there can be a slight change which can be done. So, design is not fixed by the designer. So, designers are giving few options 
to the users and users are selecting. So, if you look at the uh, cubicle 1 and cubicle 2, there is a, a slight difference. The storage is over here in the cubicle 1, in the uh, cubicle 2 the storage is over here and then in cubicle 1, uh, instead of the work, uh, um, uh, uh, working space, uh, working space is on this side and in cubicle 2 the working space is on this side. So, uh, designers is not fixing a particular design and it is uh, leaving, uh, it is uh, um, uh, giving the free uh, freedom to the users to uh, customize the design according to their need. So, uh, this is the design concept which is given by uh, George Nelson and uh, who is um, uh, 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 we say this is the action office series and action office series 1 he have designed many other series of office cubicles when the, uh, this is a design catalog uh, this is a design catalog so there will be a different kind of office uh, uh, will purchase different kind of cubicles so one cubicle ac ac uh, action office 1 which is the first design of his uh, won the alcoa award for the new concept this right now these concepts are very common in the office but the, when the, he first visualized this concept concept of modularity and customizable uh, um, elements within the module uh, uh, according to uh, based on the need and uh, which fits into the contemporary um, international style of free space uh, was a very innovative uh, approach of, um, uh, of him. So, that is why he is uh, very much uh, celebrated in the industrial design uh, fraternity and he is the founder of American modernism. He wrote a book which is uh, called Tomorrow's House and give the exp example how um, uh, the tomorrow's house uh, will be uh, will be envisioned. Now, in this uh, book, this is an illustration. You can see a free space, which is a box-like space, and that has to be uh, divided within the uh, in in the space. Uh, it has to be divided within the uh, with the furniture. So, this is a kitchen, uh, dining room, hall, living room. A boys bedroom, uh, bedroom and other spaces, they are uh, kind of flowing with each other and uh, he is giving a concept of storage wall or the partition wall which will divide. So, this is the partition wall which will divide a uh, few spaces. Even in the Transworth house, if you uh, remember, Transworth house only has a storage cupboard which is dividing the bedroom, uh, the be uh, not even the room, the bed spaces. So, uh, this um, uh, kind of uh, concepts he is also giving in the and he have uh, designed it um, in the industrial design uh, domain. So, and the modularity because of the, uh, because of the modularity and studio apartment or the free uh, flowing space within architecture uh, that this kind of concepts were evolving which is uh, uh, what he, he is desi uh, designing for the office spaces for the free flowing office spaces and he is uh, uh, the cubicle which is the solution for the free flowing office spaces. He is giving a solution for the free flowing um, uh, residential spaces which is the storage wall. Now, uh, he was also uh, uh, associated with the Harman Miller company who have uh, this company uh, has many other uh, famous designers like Noguchi and uh, was also associated with uh, this company and this Harman Miller uh, company also designed a famous Har Harman Miller chair uh, which is which we see as an office chair which um, is very ergonomic in nature and you must have seen that office chair which is not designed by um, um, uh, George uh, Nelson, but this Harman Miller chair is very famous and it is a very co famous company in, in industrial design. So, in this uh, design, this these two are designed by George Nelson. If you look at, so this also has the similar vocabulary of uh, what we have seen in architecture. This has a little gap and it also has an anti gravity look, and this is a juxtaposition of different cuboids, also the true material, and different cuboids are interpenetrated by. Uh, uh, by different planes which we are seeing in the Fran uh, Francois house or uh, the Barcelona pavilion. It is also in the coming uh, and flu uh, coming within the industrial design and also the modular approach is there and also here uh, you, you will see that uh, small uh, the heavy volume is just uh, uh, supported by only four uh, uh, slender steel structure and this heavy volume is just supported by two uh, small lines which also gives an anti-gravity look. This uh, 
space is given also for this uh, cantilever and which looks like a cantilever overhang and also the true uh, uh, materials texture is used and here also also if you see this uh, the services and the functions are also visible from outside and that's not covered and the steel the new material is also uh, visible again you will see this floating um, element which is on top of this uh, is not resting on the uh, surface is again uh, have given the uh, has the sense of anti gravity look which is there in the architecture now this is the storage wall which uh, what he was given in this uh, uh, concept of tomorrow's house um, uh, so this storage wall is a um, similar concept which he is applying in the office and this is the concept which is uh, which is getting applied in the uh, residential building so this is a storage wall one type of storage wall what he is designing which also has a modularity so in this storage wall uh, he is also again, uh, again giving the uh, freedom to the customer to choose uh, according to their need so this is a module and which is um, equal to each other so if you look at this distance instead of this module you can replace this module as well so instead of this you can have two of these and these two modules are the same so you can instead of this uh, design you can uh, repeat this into inside this and you can play with uh, according to your need and uh, it can also be uh, this part uh, can also be replaced by here and you, if you need more closed spaces it can be closed even so the openness and everything uh, so he is just giving an option of the uh, structure and uh, then everything is on um, uh, on the uh, uh, user even in today's uh, kitchenette and the modular kitchen the same concept we have uh, we use in the today's kitchen design and this is one uh, solution which is on uh, top of the wall and it can also be a uh, um, and this kind of uh, modular cabinets which also we see in the modular cabinet which everything is closed and this talks about the need of this today's life which is uh, also one is um, uh, is acting as a partition wall and the next is like uh, uh, storage spaces which are this poster which is there for this Herman Miller uh, modular wall uh, this uh, talks about what was the requirement of these all these uh, thing to be stored and it talks about the customer's need of uh, storage and uh, what is the solution so this talks about this uh, picture together in this part uh, in, in this part it talks about the requirement and in this part it talks about the solution and now uh, uh, there are some other examples of um, uh, um, George Nelson's design so this is a coconut chair and marshmallow chair both are designed under Harmon Miller's uh, uh, company's tag and uh, here also if you look at so this chair is very minimal in nature uh, nature so from uh, top so whatever is on this top is the same thing is there as acting as an armrest so there's no different design for um, uh, the uh, headrest and the armrest so it also talks about the minimalism and it comes in different color and it's just a plate and uh, this um, steel um, uh, frame is uh, supporting one single plate and if you look at the marshmallow chair uh, it also has a modularity and marshmallow chair also can be elongated so if you add few uh, uh, more circles it can be elongated and it can be a, uh, a long sofa and if you delete it can be a, a single sitter chair now uh, it also comes in pure black which talks about uh, internationalist approach and the sta uh, steel frames are uh, visible the structural system from outside you can see the every structure which is painted in black are um, um, are visible and that is the aesthetics um, uh, of this um, chair and it looks like marshmallow different marshmallows are uh, there which is act, uh, acting as a cushion here also you see the pure geometry which is circle which is getting repeated and the uh, thing of solid and void and it's also has a uh, light um, in uh, nature it's not a bulky uh, so far it's a very lightweight and uh, supported by only few steel uh, members now uh, uh, I was talking about the meta design concept which encompasses so designers and uh, um, are not giving a particular uh, solution which is very rigid so he is just giving some options where users um, uh, can select and delete and replace some options according to their need so users need is kind of um, uh, uh, influencing the design so it's not designers 
uh, are giving a design and it's just feeded on the user. So users are giving a feedback to alter the design and which is there in the cubicle design and as well as the storage design. So uh, it's modular and then different uh, elements are there so they can change it and um, it can be added, it can be, it can be elongated, it can be squeezed, uh, uh, some modules can be added uh, uh, and some modules can be deleted. So previous it was uh, like a waterfall models so designers is uh, envisioning a thought and that is getting designed and users are uh, receiving it now this is the iterative model where stake all stakeholders can translate uh, their voice of customer or their own uh, thought into the design. So how this design um, uh, model goes, so this is the, this can be a, a meta mod, um, a designs uh, model. So uh, designers are here and this is the final design goes to the user. Uh, so designers has first the envision, they, they create the concept then develop concept of the design then they don't give it to the design uh, users so users also come here so uh, they take the users feedback and they iterate the design and then they show the design to again the uh, to the users and then they finally design it and then the final design can come but within that process so it can also uh, might not go so they, they can also give few examples and then leave it to the users and users uh, can select few examples and make the uh, make their own design assembling those uh, uh, design uh, things so that is the concept and even in architecture today's uh, architecture also uh, in the postmodern architecture this concept of co-design or meta design or participatory approach uh, there are different terms in uh, design domains and architecture domains but they all talk about the participatory approach of user and uh, design collaborating and creating their design uh, together. So that gives a more uh, sense of attachment uh, to the, uh, the designed product with the user because they have their own voice into the design and they, uh, they cater to the need of the user much uh, in a much better way because this is different people's need will be different and uh, that is how it has to cater. Because now in internationalism that uh, in one hand we are talking about the same thing has to be there but in terms of that it cannot be accepted by all because if um, it cannot be accepted by all because uh, everybody's need is different that is why instead of designing a full um, solid design in industrial design they design in a module and few options and then they give um, uh, fix the international style into that and then the uh, users uh, can assemble on top of the um, uh, with that uh, few op options according to their need. Now there are other uh, uh, examples of internationalist movement but uh, as we were discussing that internationalist movement uh, changed and also trans got translated into the uh, later phases of modernism where the streamlining and other uh, elements are, uh, started coming. So Noguchi is one of the architect designer and landscape designer and uh, industrial designer. Uh, his, in his example uh, streamlining or the uh, the fluidity of the design which was in uh, which will come in the late, later phases of modernism uh, uh, of where the form is again uh, having an emphasis in the uh, uh, visual style is there but still his uh, uh, his uh, style is uh, from internationalism so he's a uh, he's from a japanese or, uh, origin but if we look at the purity of the material is there and uh, in both the cases uh, in streamlining which we will discuss in later phases so these kind of curves continuous curves are there which is predominantly there in the uh, product design uh, mostly so it talks about the ergonomics which we were discussing earlier in the previous uh, when we were giving a brief about it so it's also uh, there now Noguchi has a museum in the New York also it's uh, he's uh, again collaborated with the Herman Miller whose um, George Nelson was also part of it. Now in Noguchi's design we will see minimalist approach which is there but there is a fluidity added to it. Now this is uh, not a uh, internationalism style uh, this is, this is uh, yeah internationalism styles are different variant so uh, now uh, from internationalism style is actually called as we to, uh, were discussing is a uh, high modern or the late modern so all everything can be fitted in the, into the international style but it is a little offshoot from the international style which is streamlining so stream, in streamlining what happens there is different curves are added which is non geometrical uh, not pure geometry and there is a fluidity in the design so uh, 
this is Kim Weber's lounge chair which has a lot of similarity with the industry uh, uh, with the inter internationalism which it, it is actually a part of sm uh, um, uh, um, smaller movement within the internationalism. So here we see the uh, true material which is steel and the black color which is there has some similarity with the Barcelona chair but these curves are added so which is not which is a little different from internationalism. So Noguchi's uh, design is also something in between these um, styles. So whenever uh, architects design their style does not uh, might not be on particular one particular style because this is a very uh, qualitative uh, thing and it is very dy dynamic in nature and um, one architect uh, gets influenced by other architect and uh, or the designers. So it is fluid and um, in one particular design there can be uh, characteristics of two three different um, movements design movements as well so this is uh, uh, has uh, these are the examples of other product design from streamlining so here also you see the industrial look the new material and the black and the stainless steel the pure materials color and it looks about uh, talks about the machine design and machine aesthetics but not as the for the machine movement for the machine movement there was no ornamentation and each and every uh, elements were different but in stream uh, streamlining everything blends together so in for the machine movement what will happen one element will be just added with the other so we were sh uh, showing the car uh, in, in, in case of product design every element headlight and other things were just added and the car becomes the for the machine movements car but here if you look at so there is a visual correlation so this curve is blended with this curve and proper uh, design is um, added and this is ergonomic uh, design so that, so that people can hold it and this curve so these are all are different parts of this fan but the curve is together and this this is creating one particular uh, volume which is um, there in the streamlining streamlining has a uh, a kind, a kind of ha, uh, has also a similarity with the uh, tensile and, uh, and uh, the shell structure which is there in our architecture where the shell structure which is also the structural material will create a form uh, like Erosarinan's work. Uh, so the form is not minimal and also uh, shows the structural uh, stability and uh, creates the aesthetics um, from this uh, from the outside. So uh, this is something in between streamlining and internationalism movement is also a landscape architect few of the examples in the landscape domain. So here we see the fountain which uh, also has a pure geometry uh, in, in this case here he is using pure geometry there is no uh, different curves and there is two different material which is a solid and um, uh, the water is flowing. So actually the water is uh, going from uh, the pipe within in, uh, inside but when it is uh, the um, fountain is on uh, the water uh, covers the pipe and this also has an anti gravity uh, look and pure geometry is it's, uh, like it is floating from this um, just by water. And also if you look at this uh, landscape elements and natural rock but natural rock has also a look of uh, geometry it come it is trying to fit into a geometry the natural element is also trying to be a geometric element and within that there is like uh, uh, you can see the Mondrian's kind of uh, dividing a canvas is also uh, there in this um, design. And also if you look at this is a, a pure circle and this is a pure cuboid penetrated by a cylinder. This is a uh, this is there in the New York uh, Noguchi's um, this in, uh, famous installation is there and also the color is red. Uh, this also takes uh, inspiration from Bauhaus as well because these are very close to each other. Now Werner Panton is one of the famous designer and again Panton's design, Panton's chair will fall under uh, some of the examples will fall under um, uh, internationalism and some will be um, uh, kind of under streamlining. So it is it, not a different movement, so it is kind of uh, it goes hand in hand. He was associated with the uh, Vitra Furniture Company which, uh, which is another again uh, famous company and uh, he explored mo uh, mostly with plastic as a furniture making material. and also added fluidity in design which is more closer to the streamlining uh, phase uh, but also uh, ter, uh, late modern designer. Now in uh, when he is using plastic uh, this uh, fluidity of the plastic comes um, as an element and it is uh, quite different from the uh, industri uh, internationalist look. Uh, so we will see some examples. Uh, so this is the famous Panton chair and you see the you know, this is this is definitely stream, uh, streamlining it is not internationalism at all. But uh, it also comes in uh, black and white but this color is the uh, uh, famous and there is one single 
uh, fluid surface which um, creates the chair which is um, uh, which is called the Panton uh, chair. Vernon Panton is known by this famous chair. But there are other examples as well by the Vernon Panton. So here he is exploring a pure geometric volume which is cone. So these chairs and the stool is derived from a cone which is a pure geometric shape. So uh, this is um, again it comes in blue, red, this pure colors and then it is a peacock chair. So, a peacock's um, uh, visual identity uh, like its tail is derived in a very uh, simple geometric form and here also this is uh, assembled with a steel which is not painted and then cushions which are pure geometric circles uh, which creates the chair and this is also a part of a uh, uh, hemisphere and this is a part of uh, this is a uh, cylinder. Now again, we uh, earlier we have discussed Barcelona chair, which is designed by Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, which is within this Barcelona pavilion. This is a photograph from the Barcelona pavilion where you are seeing different textures and this uh, glass curtain wall. So this we have already discussed. This comes also under the internationalist uh, movement of furniture design. And these are some other furnitures which is designed by Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. So here also you see half circles and then pure. Um, uh, it's uh, very minimal in nature and the uh, stainless steel black that kind of visual palette is there. So, these are the other uh, set which is uh, which can be assembled with the Barcelona chair. Now, uh, Corbusier also designed a uh, uh, few uh, product design and in Villa uh, La Roche which is in uh, Paris, uh, this kind of Corbusier's own design of chairs are there. So, here if you see, uh, you see this, this chair is there and here you see a uh, a uh, way of streamlining because if this curve it is not a pure curve, but um, this is something in between streamlining and modern internationalist movement. Uh, again, um, uh, I am telling again and again that streamlining is not a very separate movement which uh, falls under the internationalism movement as well. And this is the uh, Le Corbusier's chair. The chair is absolutely coming out of a uh, uh, cuboid, some uh, volume of the cu uh, cuboid is um, uh, taken out and this chair takes its form and uh, it also comes within the, uh, uh, the this color tone black and then steel is added from outside. So, which is also there if you look carefully this chair is also there in the Villa Roche. So, uh, in the next class onwards we will discuss the later, uh, later phases uh, after internationalist movement uh, with some examples. Thank you.